A rich, dashing Dr. McDreamy is found shot and stabbed to death in the garage of his luxury home. I can't go in. And the investigation into the shocking murder of esteemed pathologist Dr. Joseph Sonye becomes a whodunit of cinematic proportions. And all the circumstances around it were clearly a, kind of a real life soap opera. With a cast of players that includes Dr. Sonye's beautiful new girlfriend, Rochelle. And another doctor obsessed with stealing Rochelle away from Dr. Sonye. He had left his wife uh, for Rochelle. And it was a powder keg. For his children, the murder of Dr. Sonye in Lubbock, Texas, was a tragic and astounding case of lightning striking twice in the same place. I can only describe it as deja vu. Their father would die almost exactly two years to the day after their mother, Becky, his ex-wife, was shot dead by her second husband in a bloody murder-suicide. Losing one parent would be enough to crawl in a hole and you know, give up on, on everything. But uh, in our case, we lost both parents and lost them within two years of each other, both under incredibly tragic circumstances. Dr. Sonye is found savagely murdered, shot five times, stabbed 11, his body lying in a pool of blood next to a Gatorade bottle used to silence the gun. And the brutality is painfully reminiscent of the horrible, violent way Dr. Sonye's ex-wife died. I just hope no one ever experiences that. I had to do it twice. Their mother's killing was emotionally devastating for her children. The boys loved their mother. And there was a lot of grief and anger and a great sadness because it was so unnecessary. It also deeply hurt their father, who had been married to Becky for nearly 30 years. He still loved my mom, and the fact that they had gotten a divorce didn't mean that he, he didn't look back fondly on the years of our family being together. And Dr. Sonye continued to be a tower of strength for the family. Joe immediately took over and handled funeral arrangements, legalities, helped his boys through the trauma of it all. Joe was there for his sons. Son Dallas says the tragedy drew the two of them even closer than they already were. We were best friends. We were uh, each other's confidants. It wasn't just his family who loved Dr. Sonye. He was an honest, good guy. He strove to do the correct thing. He didn't have any real enemies. He had a lot of friends. He took care of a lot of people. He was a support structure for so many of his colleagues and friends. And being a doctor with charm, good looks, and an estimated net worth of $12 million made him one of Lubbock's most eligible middle-aged bachelors. He was crazy and silly and funny and very charismatic. The women seemed to love him. And Dr. Sonye, 56 at the time, was kicking up his heels at a local ballroom dance club. He got so good at it. I mean, he was on fire. And he felt so confident in it. It was a great place to meet friends, to meet dates, uh, to take dates. And it was on the dance floor that Dr. Sonye would find romance with a stunning 47-year-old divorcee named Rochelle Shatina. When I met her, I liked her immediately. She was funny, she was fun, she was very down to earth. Everybody I know liked her. Dr. Sonye had swept Rochelle off her feet, taking her on glamorous nights out to the best restaurants and private clubs, whisking her off to Paris for a romantic getaway and to Los Angeles to meet son Dallas and his family, where Rochelle even got to play with Dr. Sonye's grandkids. We were taken by her. She was beautiful and she was um, intelligent and she carried herself uh, in a very respectful manner. And it was apparent Rochelle was in love with Dr. Sonye. She was really into my dad, and that, that meant a lot to us. Um, that's important. Rochelle made no secret of it, excitedly posting photos of herself with Dr. Sonye on Facebook and declaring, quote, I love this man. And she appeared to have found the Mr. Right she'd been looking for. At that point, she was a single mom. She was doing all she could to support her kiddos. 
uh, and she was trying to, you know, find the perfect man. And I think that with Dr. Sonye, she believed that, you know, I have finally found the perfect man that I can spend the rest of my life with. And Dr. Sonye seemed to be equally smitten with the gorgeous Rochelle. I believe any man would be proud to have her walking beside him. But Dallas says his father didn't want to commit to any one particular relationship. I was really sad for him then because I felt like he was finally with someone who had been a better fit for him than some of his previous relationships. And I knew this one wasn't going to last. No one could have imagined how suddenly and tragically it would end. Man, what's going on? I can't go in. Next, police suspect one of the many women in Dr. Sonye's life may have killed him in a jealous rage. We talked to several women that had been sexually involved with him. While okay. he was involved with me? 